So now that we have our basic to-do design, what we're going to do is wire this up with real application code. So since we're using the React starter project, we have the build configuration already set up for us. So we'll go ahead and actually just start the build. So what you're looking at right now is the design compiled to React. Uh, this isn't actually, you can't actually interact with this. It's, it's everything static. What, what we want to do is convert things like this input into uh, something that, that's wired up. This button needs to be wired up and also these individual items need to be a repeated list. And so we're going to go ahead and, and do all of that. So the first thing we need to do is go over to our main application. And what you'll notice right here is this little joystick which basically means that we have uh, controller code attached to this uh, sort of UI. Now, controller code is sort of derived from MVC, where you have a uh, model. In this case, we're not actually using the model. Um, the controller, uh, the view is, is this case. It's all sort of like the visual stuff. <clears throat> but the view is only as good as the, it has to be sort of controlled by something. It, to have logic attached to it. And so the controller is sort of like there uh, to sort of basically bring this thing to life. And so in the properties tab, we have our controllers uh, that we can define right here. Now we can add multiple controllers primarily so that if you want to say add a PHP controller and a view controller, React controller, or .NET controller, you can add multiple controllers uh, specific to frameworks or languages so that you can repurpose your UIs uh, for different platform targets. <coughs> but in this case, we, um, we already have our application sort of attached to a controller file. So we'll go ahead and, and open that up. So with our, with our controller code, I'll, I'll kind of go over to the more important details and then I'll kind of jump into the smaller nuances. We have our, our base. This is a higher order component. And so just to show you how all this works, we have our application controller, which um, basically uh, is what's going to be used throughout the application. And then that's going to be rendering sort of the base, sort of the, the dumb sort of UI code, the design uh, that we created within Tandem. And so in this case, we have our, our base which is this UI. So let's go ahead and, and change the property out. So we'll change this uh, text to something else. So what we need to do is go over to our UI and see sort of what that uh, the layer label is. We're, we'll change this to something else like a to-do title. And you'll notice that as soon as we save this, we'll have access to changing the properties of that text. Awesome to-dos. You'll notice now that this that's changed to awesome to-dos. Now the, the, the properties are, um, the labels are converted over to the properties <coughs> that the component accepts. So if we have, as you notice, the to-dos title, if we change this to something like uh, just title, you notice again that the title props are exposed. Likewise, if we have our uh, controls, we'll change that. We'll change controls, props, children, uh, empty array. You'll notice now that the controls are gone. And so we have a type definition file generated from these designs to help sort of tell us exactly what properties are available to us so that if we ever change the uh, the label for whatever reason, like, uh, I don't know, we'll change this back to controls and we'll change this back to tidally. You'll notice that the application will not compile. It'll throw an error because the properties, uh, this title props doesn't go anywhere. Uh, now these properties are defined within here. So if you want to see sort of what a design accepts, all you need to do is go over to the over to the generated d.ts file for the React based project uh, to see sort of what properties a design or a UI sort of accepts. 
So we're going to go ahead and actually start wiring this thing up. Um, what I'm going to do is actually create a, a dynamic list of items right now. So we have two ways of doing this. We'll go with the less optimal way um, because it's, it's going to be easier. So we'll do item props, children, nothing. So we have no children now. And then we'll go ahead and uh, import the item from the view.pc uh, view because the view.pc is compiled to a um, React code. It exports the components that are defined within it. So in this case, we have our item, which is, again, by its label. So we have item here. We'll go ahead and do items. And then give the label of the item a little bit more descriptive name. And then feed this into our items props. Item, hello item one. And then we'll add one more item to that. Hello item two. Now it's notable that the controllers are attached wherever the component is used. So to demonstrate that, what I'm going to do is add an item controller. We'll do item.tsx and to maintain the same convention the naming convention that we have going on we'll hyphenate that and call it item dash controller item controller open this up and then So now that we have our basic item, item controller, we'll go ahead and, and add that to our item. We'll select that, item controller, save it, and now we have our item. So you'll notice now that our application is actually not compiling. We have these squiggly, uh, the TypeScript is telling, uh, telling us that we have something going on. It's saying that label props does not exist. Now the reason for that is because the item controller does not expose any props that, that you can define. So in this case, uh, if we want to define label, we'll do that and then we'll change this out to change that accordingly. And then hello item two. And we'll take the props from that. So we basically have exactly what we have before, but now these individual items have controllers attached to them. So we can add uh, additional logic if we choose to. So it's important to note that the props need to be exported for any item controller, and that's required because any other controller that uses, say, this item uh, component, for example, uses the props uh, to identify exactly sort of what it accepts. And so in this case, if we were to actually remove this, you'll notice that we're, we're, we're going to get an error here. So we'll change this to any, and then the type definition file actually won't compile. The, it's going to give us an error right here. Import props from item controller. And so we're going to go ahead and re-add that. 
um, just so that uh, we can sort of silence that problem once again. So now that we have sort of a basic repeated list of items, I'm going to go ahead and, and wire this up with the actual input controls that we have here. So here we have our basic implementation for a to-do application. Now the code's not pretty and there are lots of things that we can do to make this a little bit uh, cleaner. And so what we're gonna do in the next couple of videos, I think is explain uh, additional features of Tandem while adding features and cleaning things up.